Hi gang! Some questions I get asked a lot is what voltage is needed for my smoke precipitator and what can be used to power it. In this video I thought I'd measure that voltage and demonstrate some things powering it. Here's the smoke precipitator. It consists of a foil cylinder with a well-rounded bottom edge facing a thin wire mesh. Since the mesh is closest to the table, I connect that to ground. Along the way I include about 240 kilo ohms of 2 watt resistors to prevent sparks from damaging the power supply. The foil cylinder is then connected to high voltage positive. I can do that because this high voltage power supply puts out a high voltage positive with respect to ground. This is my homemade high voltage 30 kV DC power supply. This one has a flyback transformer followed by a voltage multiplier at the output which puts out flat DC. The voltage has to be flat DC. It can't be AC and as you'll see shortly pulse DC may not work either. What voltage is needed for the smoke precipitator? Partly it depends on the distance between the mesh and the bottom edge of the foil. It also depends on the geometry of the mesh and cylinder. Maybe bigger holes or a thinner wire will allow lower voltage. So the measurements I'll do are for this geometry. To measure the voltage I'm using my Fluke 80K-40 high voltage probe. The output goes to this meter. I have it on the 30 volt DC scale. And we're looking at this scale with a 3 at the end. That 3 is actually 30 and we multiply the value we get by 1000. Here it is with the distance between mesh and cylinder of 31 millimeters or 1.2 inches. I adjust the voltage to the lowest that still works and the voltage needed is around 29,000 volts. I decrease the distance to 27 millimeters or 1 inch. The voltage is around 21,000 volts. The smaller the distance the lower the voltage you need in order to have the same effect on the smoke. But with 25 millimeters or 0.98 inches it gives sparks which is no good. So for this geometry around 21,000 volts is needed. I don't have any good way of measuring current but it's probably in the microamps since as you'll see a Wimsers machine powers it. This is my homemade cube power supply. As you can see it doesn't work. When I turn up the voltage the smoke goes from smooth to turbulent but doesn't get attracted enough to the cylinder to capture the smoke. This one has a flyback transformer followed by a diode at the output so it puts out pulsed DC. I can't measure the voltage here because the high voltage probe just smooths out the pulses and it looks like flat DC but the input is maxed out and I know that means it's probably around 20,000 volts. I decrease the distance between the mesh and foil cylinder all the way to 15 millimeters or 0.6 inches where it finally just arced and melted a hole in my plastic cylinder. I repair it with a little tape. Note that a flyback transformer with nothing after it on the output puts out AC and won't work. To shorten the path for the ionized smoke in the center to travel to the cylinder I put a piece of thick wire to go across the center and then two more to make it cross. I then roll some kitchen aluminum foil on and super glue the seam and fold the ends over. I also add a little bit of tape but not too wide a piece since I want to cover as little of the foil as possible. I do the same for all three pieces. Next I hot glue them together. Finally I press fit it in place. It's important that there's good foil to foil electrical contact with the ring of the cylinder. And here's the cube power supply again but with the cross in place. Notice that it's actually worse. The charge is probably spread over too large an area. I bring up my small commercially made Van de Graaff that gives longer sparks than my homemade one. I connect the bottom dome to the mesh and the top dome to the foil cylinder. But it has no noticeable effect. And here it is again with the cross in the foil cylinder. Also no good. My homemade Van de Graaff generator has even lower voltage incurred so I won't bother with that. My homemade Wimsars machine using a CD won't work for sure either. That one's designed to be easy to make and doesn't produce a very high voltage or current. But I bring up my commercially made Wimsars machine. Using wires with alligator clips on the ends I connect one side of the spark gap to the foil cylinder with no cross and the other side of the spark gap to the mesh. This also puts out flat VC and as you can see it works quite well. And a word of warning. At these voltages ozone is being produced. Prolonged exposure to ozone is hazardous to your health and so you should do this in a well ventilated room. Voltages somewhere below 10,000 volts don't produce ozone but I don't know what that cutoff point is. Well thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel for more interesting videos like this. If you want to help support these videos then you can through my Patreon page or you can go to my website and donate any amount you want. And if you like these videos don't forget to subscribe, give a thumbs up, share with your social media or leave a question or comment below. See you soon!